Hey, it's Shane from GotRom.com. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to fix frozen hips with this deep stretch sequence. Stay tuned. In 2011, doctors told me my hips were so tight they were going to need surgery. But today, my hips can do the splits. One of the keys for me was deep stretching. Today, I'm gonna to take you through a deep hip mobility sequence so you can unfreeze your frozen hips, melt away pain, so you can move and feel good. The first thing we're gonna do is test your squat. Take your squat stance and go up and down a couple times. If your hips are as frozen as mine were, it'll probably feel as bad as it looks here on camera. But the first thing we're gonna to do to start to unglue that is put you in child's pose. So I'm gonna go through several variations of child's pose, but this is just a nice, gentle way of easing into your hips. You'll see me here wiggling side to side, just kinda of getting to know how my hips are feeling today. I rest my forehead on the ground, my arms are out front, taking big, sighing exhales, <sighs> relaxing. Sometimes I'll put my forehead on my forearms, shift around, wiggle. You'll notice that I'm not just in a stuck static position. I'm actually wiggling and prying and squirming. This is super important. You'll see me here leaning over to one side. This actually stretches the glute on that side. Or leaning over to the other side, putting all my weight on top of that shin, getting a nice little glute stretch on the other leg. This improves hip flexion a lot. If you're having trouble with deep squatting, that's super important. Next thing that you want to do is down dog variations. So you're going to pedal your feet out, stretching one hamstring at a time, then the other. This is also a nice shoulder opener, but since we're unfreezing our hips, we're going to focus on the lower extremity. Notice how I'm dropping my chest, which exaggerates the hamstring stretch, wiggling, lifting one leg up, which puts more of a stretch on the bottom hamstring and calf. And then I want you to alternate, lift the other leg up in the air, little pulses, little bounces, little twisting, whatever feels good to your body. Reaching up one more time, getting that twist that I missed the first time on my body. And then taking a slightly wider stance, dropping my head and chest towards the ground, getting a little free upper back opener while I'm at it. And then I'm flowing right into a forward fold variation. So walk your feet forward, fingertips on the ground. Again, kind of stretching one leg at a time, bending the other leg, stretching the other hamstring. Going back and forth, you see me reach back with my hand to kind of um, externally rotate or twist my thigh out. Helps to kind of feel the stretch in a different place. People don't use their hands enough to exaggerate the stretch and get a nice deeper stretch so use those hands from there we're going to lift up and lower we're creating some strength in the hamstrings as we lift up activating them which when we release allows them to stretch deeper wiggling prying shaking the head out if you feel any tension in the head or the neck it's important to be relaxed while you're doing these frozen hip stretches then we're gonna move on to hip flexor stretching. Take a long lunge stance, put your hands on your thigh, and you're going to lean forward just a little bit without arching your back so that you're getting a stretch on your back hip flexor. This is your most basic entry level hip flexor stretch, but I like to make it a little more active, a little more dynamic, a little bit more like real life where you actually have to balance and support your own body weight. It can be helpful to rest your elbow on your thigh and reach up with the other hand. That kind of ties in the whole fascial chain of the abdominal fascia and the psoas and the iliacus, part of the hip flexor complex. Notice this kind of like crunching and coming up and down that I'm doing and even this little subtle bouncing and side bending. All of these are very subtle but very important cues. I also like to put my shoelaces flat on the back leg and lift my heel up off the ground on the front leg which changes where I feel the stretch. After that you're going to switch legs, change to the other side, 
and we're going to repeat that sequence on the other side. So we're crunching, squeezing your glutes so that you don't over arch your back, feeling a stretch right on the front of the hip flexor, coming in and out of range. This is something that I don't see a lot of people doing enough. They just go to their end range and hang out there, but I find it more effective to gently come in and out of range helps it feel better. Notice how I'm exaggerating the crunch first and then I drop down into the stretch, followed by reaching up and side bending. Then I wiggle forward and back. I lift my front heel off the ground. All of those subtly change what I'm feeling in my hip flexor. Then I go shoelaces down version, lifting up, that's a contraction. Raising my arms really forces my muscles to kick on a lot harder. The side bending also influences where I'm feeling the stretch. From there, to keep unfreezing our hips, we're gonna to go to the Spider-Man glute stretch. Notice I'm using my hand to twist my femur externally, kinda of pry and open up those hips, allowing me to drop my elbow to the inside of the foot. Rolling out to the edge of my foot, no stress on the knee here. Make sure it's all kind of in the outer hip area. Wiggling and prying, looking for where I feel tight. Looking like Spider-Man crawling up a wall. From here, I'm going to twist my belly button towards my thigh. This exaggerates the stretch on that far glute. Raising up also changes it a bit, raising up at the arm. If you can, dropping down to the edge of your foot and dropping your shoulder and head down towards the ground really winds up that external rotation of the femur, really winds up that glute. A little bit more advanced, so don't force it if you're not there yet, no worries. Wiggling forward and back, just creating space in my hip. Now we're going to the pigeon twisting glute stretch. Now that my external rotation has been kind of warmed up, I drop into a pigeon pose, turn my belly button towards my knee, moving in and out of range, feeling into my hip. What am I feeling in there? Does it feel like a good muscular stretch? I also like to slide my hand across, putting my forearm on my leg more of a twisting action. This actually just makes the glute stretch deeper. This isn't about getting a spinal twist necessarily. It just makes the glute stretch deeper. Notice what I'm doing with my hands, clasping one hand on top of the other. That helps me to feel strong and stable in that position. And then dropping my shoulder on top of my foot, my shoulder on top of my knee. This really is one of the deeper glute stretches. You may not be able to get all the way into this position, but slowly as you warm up and free up your hips, you'll be able to get into this sleepy pigeon, I call it. Now you're going to change legs and do the same thing. We just really work the external rotation on the other side. Now we're gonna do the Spider-Man glute stretch on this side. First, exaggerating the external rotation. Some people call this active pigeon. So you're dropping your knee towards the ground, this is just freeing the hip socket up into external rotation. Eventually, you can drop down to an elbow and push away and twist. This is just another way of targeting other muscles in the hip. Just trying to find as many creative ways as we can to open up those hips for squatting. From there, again, I'm rocking. I might drop down to an elbow, again, in that Spider-Man kind of position. Notice how active and how kind of moving I am in this. Don't, don't get it twisted, don't be confused. I am relaxing. It's not constant movement with no relaxation and stretching. There's definitely letting go and stretching happening, but there's also activity within movement. Now I'm twisting to get more of a glute stretch, the pigeon twisting glute stretch, followed by dropping the knee down to the ground. Now this is your classic pigeon pose in yoga, but I um, am much deeper into it now because of all that preparatory work that I did. Don't forget if you're liking this video, hit the like button, support the channel, and then flow into the twisting glute stretch where your hands are pushing and prying and twisting that femur more and more externally. You almost never see anyone do this in yoga class, but it makes a huge, huge difference to set the femur in the back of the socket and give you a much deeper, much, much nicer glute stretch. From there, sleepy pigeon, putting your head on the ground, your shoulder on your knee, your other shoulder on your foot. Breathing and relaxing. From there, because we've 
opened up the external rotation on both hips, the glutes on both hips, we're going to go to double pigeon, one of the most advanced glute stretches. Um, so I start by hugging my knee to my chest, kind of preparing me to go into the double pigeon, um, sinking my shoulder down towards the ground. Notice how I just drop my shoulder. This is just yet another way of targeting different fibers of the glute followed by the actual double pigeon or fire log pose. Again, notice how I'm twisting my belly button towards my knee. The foot is cocked up towards the knee to protect the knee from getting uh, strained. Flex and evert your foot, meaning put your pinky toe up and towards your knee by activating your front shin muscles. From here, I'm kind of making it a loaded stretch by taking my hands off the ground. I'm bouncing, I'm twisting. All of these are in response to what I'm feeling in my body in this moment. So if you watch yourself stretching, you should see something similar, some activity within the movement based on what you're feeling. Moving on to the other side. I'm first hugging the knee towards my chest. Notice my eyes are closed. This helps me relax and feel into my body much, much deeper. Dropping my shoulder towards the ground feeling it somewhere in my deep glutes, contracting. You can see me squeeze my fist and then letting go, relaxing. A little PNF, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation stretching, oh baby. From there, now we're in the fire log double pigeon, checking out the different corners, the different angles, bouncing, wiggling, twisting, making it a loaded stretch by taking my hands off the ground. It makes all my muscles turn on and fire a lot harder, which paradoxically brings me deeper into the stretch. This is one of my favorite, favorite ways of opening up the hips into external rotation. From there, we're going to move on and stretch the front of our thighs, the quads, taking one foot back, putting the other leg on top, lifting my hips up by squeezing my glute, and then relaxing back the whole front chain of my body, if you know the couch stretch or the wall quad stretch, this is a similar feeling, but something you can do anywhere even if you don't have a wall. Notice how I put my head on the ground first. It's okay if my back is arching a little bit. As I settle into the stretch and my quad lengthens, there will be less of an arch in the back, which is the goal. Reaching up with your hand like that also ties in the whole fascial chain, changes where you feel the stretch. In this position, I'm breathing and relaxing or contracting and relaxing, tensing up and releasing. The other thing that you can do is be in more of a sitting position if going all the way back is too intense for you. Even some subtle little bounces or little movements are an advanced maneuver you can do here. But you should feel that stretch in the middle of the quad, not too high near the top, not too low down by the knee, just uniformly across the whole quad. As you're switching sides, see that the foot is back just to the side of my glutes, just to the side of my butt, not underneath necessarily. Breathing, relaxing, raising up to tie in that whole fascial chain. Little tiny bounces, just something intuitively that I discovered over 14 plus years of stretching. Reaching, feeling it right in the middle of my quad. Big sighing exhales in this position. This is one of those ones where you can kind of relax and rest even more. Maybe less activity here as you're really, really just letting the tissue elongate. After that, I'm going to slowly come out of the pose. Last couple of sigh, sighing exhales. From there, we're going to stretch our hamstrings by putting a, our foot up on a yoga block. I'm going to sit tall and then start to lean forward. I'm feeling it on the back of my leg and the hamstrings. I'm not pulling hard back on my toes. I'm just kind of lightly holding them. I'm keeping my quad contracted to keep my legs straight. And I'm thinking of lengthening up and out of the crown of my head. So I'm not trying to sink down so much. I'm thinking lengthen up and out of my spine. Holding my hands just, or holding my foot, holding my foot just for support, maybe with one hand, maybe with two. Slowly sinking lower, but all the time thinking of lifting up and out, making my spine long. 
It's not about going down and deeper, it's about lengthening up and out. Eventually you will change legs, put the other leg on top of the yoga block, other leg tucks behind you, just to the outside of your hip, lengthen your spine, and then reach for the foot. Notice how I don't rush into trying to go deep. It's about feeling the stretch in the right place in the hamstrings, and slowly I let it melt as it happens naturally. I use my hand to readjust the position of the femur in the socket, I rock side to side, little subtle bounces, taking my time, taking my hands off the foot makes it a little bit more of a loaded stretch, which changes how it feels. You gotta follow your intuition. Developing your inner IQ and your intuition is part of what stretching is all about. Eventually you may or may not get forehead to knee. It's not important that you do, it's just important that you feel the change happening in your hamstrings and you feel them getting more flexible as you melt into this stretch. From there, going up into a forward fold hamstring stretch. Contrary to some people's opinion, the hamstrings do contribute to um, butt wink or how your pelvis tucks under when you do a deep squat. So you can test that by doing these kind of hamstring stretches and then immediately going into a squat and you'll notice that you can get deeper without the butt wink. So stretch your hamstrings. I'm using a little bit of ballistic stretching, a little light bouncing, little wiggles, whatever it feels like I need to make my hamstrings release and relax. For me, I really like this ballistic stretching. I like to hold my arms in this position and kind of swing myself like a pendulum towards my my shins and eventually you can do a full pike like they do in gymnastics this is sort of one of the ultimate tests of hamstring flexibility don't worry if you're not head between the legs with legs straight but grabbing your feet and doing some kind of a pike stretch can be very helpful from there let's move to prying squats this is for the groin notice how i'm wiggling side to side leaning forward coming up on my toes even coming off the ground can feel like a good hip opener, a good groin stretch. You can push your knee away with one hand, push the other side, and you notice that that stretches something slightly different, a different piece of the groin. From there, I'm going to go back into that kind of prying position, dropping my head, leaning forward even dropping my head on the ground. Again, I'm just following my intuition in this video. You should do the same. Rocking side to side, wiggling around, hunting for the lines, the angles, the vectors, the strands of tissue that feel the most tight for you. When you're done with all that, retest your squat, see how you feel. For me, it feels a whole heck of a lot better. And so I hope it does for you too. Check out the FAFix.com if you want to fix your hips, and I will see you in the next video.